been trampled underneath foot. Right. The church needs to reorient herself and take responsibility for her country, her community, and for her generation. And we have generally not done that because the doctrine of the church in the generation that I was brought up in was simply get born again and get fire insurance to go to heaven. We were never taught as part of the salvation package the responsibility of not being saved only but saving our communities, reconciling our communities, our generation, our school systems, our health care, our infrastructural development, our polity in the private sector, the public right. sector, reconciling it back to God's values. What godliness is, is not the ability to speak in tongues or to sing nicely or to preach a great message. What godliness is, is basically equity and justice, righteousness and justice, without which there will be no genuine or sovereign peace. So how come I don't get to hear that? Oh, go, go. I just want to take pastor off on this. Yes, because, I mean, I'm, I'm, from, I'm on your side. Okay. She is oh, oh, thank you. Oh, she is no, she, you know, she knows what I mean because she takes me up on this all the time, and mm. I'm glad that there's someone here who can actually speak on behalf of the church mm. because I care. Because, yeah, I know, I know it bothers you. We all care, and we're looking for real solutions. Mm. What, what I want to are. ask is this: you know, you said that um, the generation in which you grew up mm. didn't teach the church, I mean, didn't teach us beyond just getting a fire insurance to go to heaven. Mm. Are we doing better? I think that when I look across um, the flanks of the battlefield, when I look across at my, some of my friends like Sunday Adelaja, Tony Rapu, Wale Adefarasi, um, uh, just to mention a few, they are socially responsible, their doctrine, their, their, their speech, their practice is socially responsible. They're taking care of the orphans, the widows, the drug addicts, they're rehabilitating our area boys, just as we are also, we're proffering um, um, methods to really tackle the issue of corruption in our country, in our community. We're looking at it very, very seriously. It's in a conversational dimension now, mm -hmm. but it's quickly moving to a point where ultimately it will concert to the point where it becomes critical mass, mm -hmm. and it will begin to shift things. But we need you. See, the church is too churchy. We need to be able to get out into the world, public lecture, speak truth to power, demonstrate um, the way things should properly be done. Let me say it in the words of Edmund Burke, British philosopher from, I think, the 20th or 19th century. He said, the only thing necessary for evil to triumph for is, others, is yeah. for good, good men to do nothing. Good men to do nothing. Right. Yeah? We've sat back and said nothing and done nothing and stayed in our Levitical enclave yeah. uh, whose ministry is defined purely within the four walls of the church. Yeah. The, the real church, and there is a mixed multitude in church, but the real church needs to get out of the four walls and begin to say something and do something. That's why I'm here. Right now, talk about... I'm just as sick as you are with the nonsense that's going, that's going on in our leadership scenario across the country at the level of the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, the police force, um, the local government, the state government. I'm sick to hell with yeah. it. The environment that we find ourselves as in Nigeria, we know the problems we have, poverty mm. and all. And I have a problem when you know, a pastor, a man that I'm supposed to respect, takes mm. advantage of mm. that situation. Because you see, a lot of churches, they, they is just like what Femi was saying, is either yeah. they try to duplicate, uh, they want to be like you, mm. you know. And I don't know where is the suit. So they try to, they, 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 they encourage, they, no, I wouldn't say encourage, but they don't have a problem when they have members that are four or nine. Mm. They, they use miracle as, as a tool, you know, to prosper. I mean, I think we should speak because the truth is, I might, I, I may not be able to come to your church, but mm. I have to go to a church, and I have, you have to maybe pass a message that I you don't take advantage of our situation. Putting all the issues in a proper balance is important. The baby is necessary. The bath water, after it's been used to clean the baby up, you should get rid of. But the danger you run when you throw out the baby with the bath water is you lose the solution to our problems in the country. Mm -hmm. And whilst we, we genuinely have a problem in the pulpit, the pulpit has its challenges. The, the, the pew has its challenges. Um, and as a result, we've legitimized a lot of the corruption that's going on in the country. Mm -hmm. And that needs to be addressed. And it is being addressed. And sooner or later, you will find that God will make a distinction between his real people, now they're not perfect, mm -hmm. and um, those who have feigned that they represent him. Mm -hmm. And the difference will be made clear. It's not going to be far away from that. Yeah, because I used to wonder. I mean, my Bible, when I, uh, what, what my Bible says that, you know, the way is narrow, that only is a few people can go. <laughs> yes. I, I see 
it is multitude of people. I mean, it's become about the numbers. At the end of the day, you're wondering, isn't there some commerce involved here? Because it should be difficult. Christianity. It should. It should be difficult. Let me say something. <laughs> it's not so difficult. Let me. Let me jump. It let me jump be, on this be, one now. It shouldn't be something that everybody can do. I mean, everybody and their cousin says to me, "Oh, I burn again." You know, they stick it in your face. And by the way, isn't your faith a personal thing? Shield you. I don't trust people anymore who just, yeah, first, yes. of, first and foremost, they put it in my face. I've dealt with people who will deal with you only if you say you are born again. And I know what's going on in there. So let me help to clarify a few issues. First of all, I, I don't think that prosperity is a bad thing. If you're going to be able to do good things for the country and good things in the country, you're going to need an awful lot of money. influence exactly. and affluence. I agree. I agree. Now, God does not have a problem with you or me or anybody having stuff but he has a problem with stuff having you. Now, if you have stuff, it means he, and he has you, it means he can do with your stuff what he originally intended for the stuff to do in the earth. Now, God talks about money in Deuteronomy 8 and 18, and he says that, remember the Lord your God, for it is him who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant in the earth. When there is no health care in the country, that a man can go through a traumatic experience in an automobile accident mm -hmm. and doesn't get health care and as a result of not getting it quickly he dies when he shouldn't have died and maybe ought not to have died um, and yet we have people who have enough affluence and have the value system of the kingdom of God mm -hmm. who can speak to the issue, facilitate the issue right. and challenge health care to come up to the bar right. um, it, it, it helps that he has money right. and that money doesn't have him right. 